All right, guys, so we're actually in the Living Treasures Amazon room right now. So this is a room in progress, okay? Tom, the, Tom and the wonderful staff here have been working really hard getting this room to their vision and their goal. And what that's what we're gonna do here at BioDo to help them achieve their goal. So I wanna show you guys part of the overview that we're doing. Now we are gonna be coming back next year, first quarter, to redo the rest of the exhibit. So there'll be an update. So first we have this beautiful enclosure here. This is gonna be for a green tree python. So uh, the green tree python isn't coming in uh, until uh, a couple weeks, but we're gonna let to get the tank set up, get the bugs established, get the springtails established, get the mi mycorrhizae and the bacteria going. Um, all of the lights are being powered by Arcadia's, uh, Arcadia's LEDs, which as you can see right here, they're using the 51 watt LED bar, which it's Arcadia, so it is a great product. You can get these from reptilebasics.com, and you know I don't sell these because I have my Gloma Grows, um, but you know they're a great option. So in here we have a beautiful enclosure that I'm gonna really make great for a green tree python, um, and then over here we have two built-in enclosures. Uh, these are 36, 18, 36s. In here is going to be some dart frogs. Um, adult dart frogs, I believe they said they are um, some terribles. And then over here, they're getting some Tinctorius azureus with some morning geckos. So obviously I'm gonna be building these with drainage layers and all that good stuff. Uh, we are gonna be getting a specialty type of lid specifically for these tops so that way they hold the humidity that they need. And again, I'll be going over all that stuff. And then over here, we have the same size enclosure that we had for the green tree python, except this is for a Felsuma grandis, which is the giant day gecko. So you can see we put in PVC backing um, with, with, with aquarium safe uh, silicone. So it looks ugly, but you, you, they're not ever gonna see it. But since these tanks are built for the consumers to see, that's when we're gonna have, you know, that's, that's where I come in. Um, and then over here, which is the Grand Slam, we have, well, we have two. This one right here is, is a 361836, like the dart frogs, and a beautiful group of Amazon milk frogs is going in here. So we're gonna be escaping for some Amazon milks. And then, so these guys have been here for a bit. As you can see, it's a super rudimentary setup, and we're changing that. This is two Chinese water dragons uh, that, they have been, that they have rehabilitated and getting better. So this is a custom glass enclosure uh, that we have right here. And let me tell you, we drilled a hole right down there and we put the PVC backing in. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna be having a, a canister filter that's pump driven, that's gonna be going into this big basin right here. So that way we have a consistent large water area for these Chinese water dragons. And look how big this enclosure is pretty awesome so I can't wait to get I can't wait to do this this is the final one of the day and just to put it into perspective there are two Arcadia uh, LEDs up top and it's lighting this entire enclosure it just gives you the power of LEDs All right guys, so I'm back here behind and I'm first gonna get started on this enclosure right here. So first things first is getting drainage layer in here. So as you can see, I have my Hydro Grow right here. So my Hydro Grow version one. And I'm gonna cut the bag and I'm gonna put my initial drainage layer right down here into the base. Oh, way to go. So. You notice how these 36 quart bags, they're unbranded and they have a little bit more in the bag. These are what are called my zoo bags. So you guys know, I do gigs like this all across the country. We've done Sequest. Uh, we've now done Living Treasures. Um, I've done Dallas Zoo. Um, I've worked with a lot of other uh, Moody Gardens, the list goes on. And this is something that um, has been an integral part of the way that I wanna take my business. So. 
The most important thing in this entire room here is how easy is it for, for these keepers to maintain these enclosures? Because I want this to be as easy and seamless as possible. As you can see, it's a little dusty and that's okay. So I gave them a, a very decent three and a half inch drainage layer. And this is about what I want here. Um, a nice even drainage layer. And then what I am gonna do is we're gonna get them some tubing, uh, like, a, like a small plastic uh, cylinder tube. And that's gonna go here in this corner. That's gonna come up to about right here, like PVC pipe. And that will allow them to be able to put a tube down here to be able to suck out the excess water out of the drainage layer. So that way their, their life goes a lot easier, okay? Um, so what comes next is the other tank. I'm gonna get the other drainage layer put in here. Okay, I'm gonna open it up. Boom, okay. Oh, I need to be careful. So again, these bags, this is what I call the zoo bag. And if it's something that you guys are interested in as far as with your own AZA affiliation or you know whatever type of zoo you have, you know, let us know. And this is how we uh, get your costs down while providing you the really good products that we manufacture. So since this is for dart frogs, I am then also going to spread out this drainage layer to be nice and even right like this. Okay. So another thing that I want to make sure of is that the tanks match. Meaning, I don't want one tank with a one inch drainage layer that's the same biome versus another tank that, you know, uses, uses a, a, a little bit, you know, less. So I'm going to come around here, double check. Looks pretty good. Okay. So, so what comes next is we're going to be putting the substrate on top of this. But first I'm going to head on over to the Amazon milk frogs and I'm going to get them, get that drainage layer in there too. All right, here we got the Amazon milks. And we open. So I love how they built this little inside section here because it really will make their life easy. So you and I both know that Amazon milk frogs um, are dirty little critters. They need lots of heavy, heavy plants and you need to make sure that their substrate uh, you know, drains effectively. So first, let's get the drainage layer in here. Yeah, okay. So again, with all these enclosures, it's gonna be exactly the same. We're gonna put a small hole in the corner and the PVC tubing is gonna go in. So that way, if the water level starts going past the drainage layer, that they are able to, you know, drain it effectively. So that way the soil doesn't get waterlogged. Another thing that's really important here for us is we want to make sure that, again, um, that this is going to function in the way for their keepers so that way everything is um, good. So we could also have used the HydroGrow version 1. But I wanted to go with the version two for a couple things. Number one, this is a clay, a clay based uh, strange layer, which means it has a lot of calcium and other things in it. So this is gonna help their springtail populations. It's gonna help maintain soil quality. And honestly, it's gonna make their lives easier. And that's really what we're here for. So we got the drainage layer in here. And then we have the grandest enclosure right here. So what comes next is getting so I am for the grandest, since this is such a large enclosure, um, we are going to be running like trees and other very large things in here. So um, overall, I just want to make sure. Okay, so I'm going to give this a couple minutes. This needs to dry a little bit more before I can put the, uh, the stuff in here. Cool. All right. All right, guys, so I have the, uh, the, the, the Felsuma Grandis enclosure right here. Pretty large enclosure. We're dry. Good. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to be doing their approach a little bit differently than what I normally do. 
So I am going to be doing a drainage layer in here, but I'm doing a 50-50 mix of fauna and firma. Now the reason I'm going to do that is because we're going to be putting in large trees, but they also I also want to make it as easy as possible for them with giving the grandest the, the humidity variations throughout the day. So I am doing a light drainage layer layer in here. Nothing too crazy, only about an inch, inch and a half. Okay. Is that nice and even, Christina? A little bit more on the right. Okay. We got our drainage layer in. Next, after that, I'm going to start adding in my fauna and firma. So first, I'm gonna take the I'm gonna take the firma. Okay, out of the fauna, dump number one. So remember, guys, the hardest part about these builds is gonna be making sure that I don't use the back because the back. It's going to be constantly opened and closed. So we got about a three inch layer here. I'm going to top it off a smidgen more. There we go. So again, the reason that I'm choosing to mix my two substrates together is A, I know it's going to aerate appropriately. Two, I know that this substrate is going to be able to handle trees because that's what we're putting in here. So great. So we got our substrate layer in here. Perfect. Okay. There we go. This mixture is going to do great for the grandest. It's going to aerate top to bottom. It's going to reinforce your endo and ecto mycorrhizae and our, and your bacteria processes. And it's really just going to help with overall maintenance of the humidity spikes that the grandises need throughout the day. All right. All right, guys. So flora, flora, flora for dumpy, sorry, blah, for Amazon dart frogs. So we got the flora wet. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start putting in my initial substrate layer. So we've got a nice mixture in here. Obviously, we're going to be adding in the bio shot and everything else just to make sure and we have some leftover but promise you that's okay because I'm gonna use it okay next I'm gonna take my bio shots and I'm gonna instill the proper amount of bio shot into each enclosure. So this is each zoo bag is 236 quarts. 236 quarts. 236 quarts. I'm gonna take and I'm gonna dump. Ooh, bio shot smelly in this little confined area. Whew. Whew. So it's enough to drive you mad. Okay, so Perfect. All right. Next, I'm going to take some spag and we're going to start getting it on in these enclosures. Okay. Next is leaf litter and other assorted biodegradables. Don't worry, I'll be mixing everything together, but I'm not going to be mixing. Um, until I'm happy with the volume in each. So that looks good, that looks good, that looks good. Okay, now we mix. So it's really important that you wanna make sure that all of your biodegradables are completely mixed in thoroughly with the substrate. Like I say in all my videos, it helps prevent bad air pockets, it provides nutritional hotspots for your cleanup crew, and as we said in our last video with Chase, you know, you don't want the spag moss to prevent airflow from the top to the bottom. It's all about 
proper airflow with maintaining different soil pockets in your enclosure. Now for the dart frogs, I'm going to be putting more leaves on top to give a nice thick layer of leaves just because dart frogs live on the, on the forest floor. It's important to make sure that you give them a good healthy mixture of bio, biodiversity in the soil as well as multiple feeding spots on the top because they hunt all the time. Okay, all right guys, so what I have in front of me here is a marine land canister filter. So I'm gonna be using this canister in a slightly unconditional way, but it's a way that I have found to be proven and true when keeping you know, large reptiles that require a big water area that also need good filtration. We all know that it's really hard to keep their water clean. So this is what I'm doing. I have this bad boy all set up here and we have all three types of filtration in here. Um, we are using, uh, the water polisher on the top, the biological filtration, the chemical filtration, the mechanical filtration. If you guys check out my turtle video, uh, I go over all the different types of filtration. But what we're going to be doing is I'm, I got this beastly pump right here. Okay, so this pump is going to be sitting in here. This pump is going to be pumping the water here into the canister filter. The sheer force of this pump is going to pump the water down the canister filter through all the mechanical filter, biological and chemical filtration, pump it back out into the water area via these tubes. Let's get it set up. All right, so first thing is first. This is going to be going down here like so. So I'm taking this. Don't worry, I'm going to be covering this up so that way no tails or nothing can get accidentally put in there. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this down and I'm going to take the filter cord. It's this bad boy right here, if I can get it. Okay, and we drilled two holes in the material. So first I'm going to put, the, put this down through here. I'm going to pull. Look at that. Then we know that this is the intake. So it's going to be intaking the water here and pushing it out. Next time I'm going to take the tube for the intake. I'm pushing it through the hole like so. Okay. So Okay. Without kinking it. That is most important. You don't want to kink it. We want to make sure that we... And don't worry guys, all this is going to be like hidden away. There we go. For the most part. There. There we go. So don't worry, all this is going to be covered up. We're not going to see it. Okay? So then, I got to get the cover on here. And then this is going to go into the intake, right like this. So you want to make sure that you get this on really tight because the last thing that we want is leaks. And then after it's on to where you want it all the way down, you take the red piece and then you turn it like so. What this does is it creates almost an O-ring seal. Okay, okay, so I got the tube right here. I'm gonna take, this is the outtake tube, so the water returning into the basin. I'm gonna put it through the hole, and I know I'm gonna want this much space, likely, to mess with. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna put this right on here, exactly like the other one. And again, we are using the force of the pump to be able to handle the sheer weight, or sorry, the sheer demands of this canister filter. Now we're not going to be plugging in the canister filter. We're not going to be priming the canister filter. We're mainly using this filter as a holding apparatus to do what we need to do. 
So first I'm going to figure out where do I want the water area to be. It's going to be right like this. I need this to be as easy to use and manage as possible for these guys. So I already got the canister filter filled up with water. I'm sorry about that noise. I know that's pretty freaking terrible. And I think this bad boy holds about 10 gallon, about eight gallons. So we're gonna see here. All right, guys. So I got the I got the filter hooked up right here, as you can see. Well, I got the pump hooked up. So uh, what I did was I got the I got this bad boy right here into the deepest area. The pump is taking it into the canister filter and the canister filter is shooting it right back out right here. So we're getting all three stages of filtration being 100% driven by the pump. So that's great. So what comes next now is we're going to start figuring out how we're going to maintain this waterfall and I got just a piece to do that. Alright guys, so we got the waterfall working. This is entry level. So with me building, the most hardest challenge I have is I got to build backwards. I cannot use the backdrop for anything as a support, which means everything has to flow on its own free will in the center of the cage. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to get some terra firma in here. Now this is for Chinese water dragons. So that's two bags, two, four, and we're going to be planting some huge trees in here and a lot of other goodies. All right, guys, just bear with me for two seconds. Now, it's very carefully taking the stuff in the front and moving it over like so. Ah, oh, I was doing so good. And again, before this, uh, this before we put the dragons in here, I'm going to go through and I'm going to do, I'm going to put a pump in here. I'm going to pump out all this water. Uh, so that way they get a fresh, fresh spot of clean water here. Now this soil will recede a little bit. Okay. So that's to be expected, but we're also of course going to be adding in a lot of extra stuff too. Spag moss, a lot of leaves, a lot of leaves. Uh, I need another bag right here. It's 236 quart bio shots per zoo bag, Dom. If you're looking for the, how much we're supposed to use. Okay. All right, guys, so we were building this whole job to about 10 hours, give or take. Um, unfortunately, FedEx didn't send us all of our plants like they were supposed to, but honestly, huge success today. Let me show you guys what I did. Number one is Amazon milk frog enclosure. So you guys saw me put in the substrate layers, lots of different opportunities. We got a beautiful staghorn fern, lots of different bromeliads in here. Water bowl is going to be right there in the very back left corner in and out really easy. I love how this turned out with the moss. 
um, and the bromeliads. I mean, it just looks it just looks beautiful. So over here, we have this enclosure we built for their Felsuma grandis gecko. Got these guys right here. We got a we took one of the giant cork bar tubes that I had. I cut it down and I used it as an initial stump for a chef flare to grow out of it. Some bromeliad, some chefaleras in here, some neandabella palms, and overall, like I said, guys, I can't emphasize how hard it was for me to have to build without using the background. And you can't use the front as a background because the viewers have to be able to see in. So only having the sides as the support to maintain the entire foundation of the structure of the tank pretty freaking pleased how this stuff turned out. Over here, we have our dart frog enclosures. Love, 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 love it. So these back and the back behind the centerpieces, centerpiece here, centerpiece here, it's open. Big water dish, cocoa hut, everything they need to breed. Uh, we have some beautiful staghorn ferns, some philodendrons, and some bromeliads in here. We have um, this big old piece of cork bark here in the centralized, and I was able to get this piece of ghostwood mounted onto the cork bark. I drilled some holes, put, got some zip ties, got it all sealed in there. Like, I come in here and I look at this, and I'm just like, damn, like, I love it. And I, I love how the background is empty, but the blackness, it just, it flows. And it's a nice, tranquil, peaceful that I just, I'm really happy about it. I just, I love, I love how these turned out. Over here, we have the, for the chondro python. So this was built with the intention of an adult. Living Treasures knows a sub-adult baby cannot go in here. No bueno. So the perches are, have a circumference of 1.5 inches to 4 inches varied ranges throughout. Hot spot is over here. So we have a basking area there, 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 here, and here. They have multiple opportunities. If they want to go on the ground, which chondros don't do, but if for some reason we wanted to go in there, we have that big cork tube right there that they can slither on in there and do their thing. We have a beautiful big plant right here that I got set up right here some philodendrons, some pothos, and some chefalera, but honestly, I left the top of this open. So the plant shipment, like I said, didn't come in. We didn't get any brom cuttings like I wanted, but honestly, it doesn't need it. I love how this looks. There's a lot of opportunities for perching, a lot of different circumferences for the chondro python, and of course, once, they, once I come back here, we'll see how this looks. Then we get to the showstopper for the Chinese water dragons. Now I am so excited because we're introducing the Chinese water dragons today. Ta-da! I love this enclosure. This was hard to build. Let me tell you with having to work from the back with, so what I did was we actually took this big cork tube here, this big cork tube here. I ended up drilling and attaching via screws, this piece of ghost wood, 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 and all of this is connected. So it is a solid structure. So they can handle the weight, it can handle the activity level, it can handle these critters going all out. You can see that the canister filter is going full force, running here into the water basin, really easy to get in there, suck out the water, put fresh water in there, good to go. We are running some philodendrons. Uh, we have this big monstera in here. I mean, look at this big, look at this beast. We have a fiddle, leaf, a fiddle leaf fig tree that you can see is doing extremely well in here. And overall, guys, uh, we have an Arcadia 6% with a, with a big, uh, the big heat bulb up here that is uh, a DHP bulb, so it goes right into that musculoskeletal structure to, system to raise that heat. But overall, guys, this was an amazing experience at Living Treasures. I really appreciate Tom and his staff for giving BioDo the ability to come out here, meet some of these amazing critters, and have a part in their vision, and to help them execute their vision, and it's great. Let's get the Chinese in here. So we're gonna get these guys in here. So like most Chinese water dragons, sometimes they like to rub against the glass. So as you can kind of see, we got a little bit of the rub right there, but that'll be okay. Yeah, look at these two. Oh my goodness. 
Are you guys ready? Let's do it. All right, guys. Thank you so much for giving BioDo the opportunity to make your home so special. I can't wait to see you guys again in a couple months. Yes, I can't wait. Yes, I can't wait. Yeah. As always, guys, my name is Josh Halter, owner and founder of The Bio Dude. You can visit my website, thebiodude.com. Visit my point of sale. Like, subscribe to Dude Abides. Woo! This is a green basilisk. So these guys are also known as the Jesus lizards. Uh, they are really awesome, an awesome critter. So they're distinctly enunciated by their brilliant uh, sail rate here as well as the top crest. Uh, but the most unique thing about these guys, uh, about this guy in particular, is he only has one eye. So Laura, the head curator here, Sarah, so Sarah, the head curator here, she ended up uh, rehabilitating this guy because almost all green basilisks are well caught. So they come in with a plethora of problems. We, she got him wormed, got him healthy. She had to hand feed him now for, for months and months and months. And now this one-eyed basilisk is so spoiled that he will only be hand fed, whether it's roaches, wax worms, greens, whatever. If you put it in a bowl, he will not eat it. If you have it in your finger and put it in his mouth, he will be ready. Yeah. Oh. He's so peaceful.